morning. I'd like to uh, begin this meeting with the uh, Lord's Prayer and Pledge of Allegiance. Father, who art in heaven, 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 thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil, the promise kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. For those who are participating by Zoom, we ask that you please keep your audio on mute unless you are speaking so that the background noise does not disrupt the meeting. This time I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The consent agenda passes unanimously. All right, uh, now we'd like to start off with a um, proclamation to recognize National Public Works Week. We have Mr. Whitelock. Just got to the table. This proclamation is for National Public Works Week. Whereas public works professionals focus on infrastructure, facilities, and services that are vital importance to sustainable, resilient communities and to the public health, high quality of life, and well-being of the people of Wicomico County. And whereas these infrastructure facilities and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of public works professionals who are responsible for rebuilding, improving, and protecting our transportation, water supply, water treatment, and solid waste systems, public buildings, and other structures and facilities essential to our citizens. And whereas the year 2020 marks the 60th annual National Public Works Week sponsored by the American Public Works Association, the Canadian Public Works Association. Now therefore, the Wicomico County Council hereby designates the week May 17th through the 23rd as 2020 as National Public Works Week in Wicomico County and urges all citizens to pay tribute to our public works professionals, engineers, managers, and employees to recognize the substantial contributions they make to protecting our health, safety, and quality of life. Done this 19th day of May, 2020, signed by the entire Wicomico County Council. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Now I have a proclamation for um, National EMS Week. Whereas emergency medical services are a vital public service and the members of emergency medical services teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury. And whereas emergency medical services have grown to fill a gap by providing out of hospital care, including preventative medicine and follow up care. And whereas the emergency medical services system consists of first responders, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, emergency medical dispatchers, firefighters, police officers, and educators, administrators, and nurses. And whereas the members of emergency medical services teams, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills. And whereas appropriate to recognize the value and efforts of emergency medical services providers by designating emergency medical services week. Therefore, be it resolved that the Wicomico County Council hereby proclaims May 17th through May 23rd, 2020 as National EMS Week, done this 19th day of May 2020, signed by the entire Wicomico County Council. Yes, we have
Thank, Thank you. you. Dave, I, I would like to thank you and your staff, by the way. Um, fantastic job. There's absolutely no way to prepare for what we've been through in the last few months. And I, I, from, from my perspective, it's been seamless, and that's, that's a tribute to you and your staff. So thank you very much. You're doing excellent work. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Before we proceed with the public hearings, it's my understanding that the council may suspend Rule 5 of the Rules of Legislative Procedure requiring an in-person public hearing on legislative bills. Is that correct, Mr. Taylor? I guess he's not here yet, is he? He's actually on Zoom. I'm on. Okay. Okay, thank you. I need a motion to suspend Rule 5 of the Rules of Legislative Procedure requiring an in-person public hearing on legislative bills and a second. So moved. Got second. a motion by Mr. McCain. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Davis. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. All right. Unanimous. Mr. Taylor. Okay, Mr. Taylor, if you can go ahead and start. We're going to adjust the audio as you're going through your presentation. All right, go ahead, Mr. Taylor. Uh, one, two, three, four, can you hear me? A little bit better. You want me to go ahead? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll just start over. Yes. For public hearing today, it's Legislative Bill 2020-03. It was introduced April 21st of this year. Uh, it is an act to provide in Chapter 37, titled Ethics Law, uh, is amended to comply with the Maryland Code. And it's on for public hearing. I can discuss it if you want me to, either before or after. Okay. Do we have any comments from the public on Zoom? Are there any listeners on Zoom that would like to comment on Legislative Bill 2020-03? Are there any public comments? All right, this concludes public hearing on Legislative Bill 2020-03. Need a motion to approve Legislative Bill 2020-03. So move. Who made that motion, Mr. McCain? Hastings. Mr. Hastings. Do we have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. McCain. Any discussion? All right, no discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed, say nay. Roll call. Is this a roll call? Okay. Roll call, starting with Mr. Davis. Aye. Ms. Ackley. Aye. Ms. Hay Mr. Hastings. Aye. Mr. Holloway. Aye. Mr. Cannon. Aye. Mr. McCain. Aye. And the chair votes aye. This is unanimous. Ms. Hurley. Okay, good morning, Mr. President, council members, and ladies and gentlemen listening um, remotely. Um, the next item on the agenda is a public hearing on the constant yield rate. The constant yield rate is a hypothetical county real property tax rate calculated by the Maryland Department of Assessments and Taxation. It would generate the same amount of revenue in fiscal year 2021 that was generated the previous year. In this case, it would be fiscal year 2020 by the tax rate in that year. As the county's assessable base um, increases, the constant yield rate decreases. By Maryland law, if the real property tax rate is set above the hypothetical constant yield rate, a public hearing must be held. The county executive has submitted a proposed budget for fiscal year 21 with a tax rate of 0.9286, which is higher than the hypothetical constant yield rate. A public hearing notice was published in the Daily Times stating that a public hearing would be held today at 10 a.m. This hearing is not about the actual budget or the tax rate to be adopted for fiscal year 21, as the County Council will adopt the tax rate at its meeting scheduled for June the 2nd, 2020 at 6 p.m. in the Government Office Building, Room 301. And Mr. Wayne Strasburg is here if there are any questions. All right, do we have any public comments? If you're on Zoom, please unmute and say what you have to say. Any public comments? Mm -hmm. 
All right. Ms. Hurley, do you have any written public comments? I have two public comments that came in by email. Um, the first one is from Mr. Kenneth Robinson from 8398 Reagan Road, Mardella, Maryland, or Mardella Springs, Maryland, 21837. In reference to our property tax rate, I think every property owner on the west side of Wacomico County should get a rate decrease for the following reasons. Mardella Middle and High School has again been treated like it doesn't exist by being taken completely out of the CIP, which means Mardella Middle High School renovations has again been pushed back at least until 2025. This is unacceptable. The Barren Creek Road Bridge that was washed out in July of 2016 has still not been replaced or has replacement even begun. At the Sharptown Town Hall meeting in September of 2019, County Executive Bob Culver stated money was, in, was budgeted and construction would be started by spring of 2020, and yet we still see no progress on this project. The other two bridges that washed out there were fixed immediately, even though one of them was a road that only had one structure on it, the American Legion. Again, this is unacceptable. On the west side of Wacomico County, there has been a three million gallon chicken gut soup tank constructed and put into oper operation, which should make our property taxes less because our property values in this area have drastically been reduced by the construction of this monster. Due to the reasons above, I hope you take into consideration all of these factors before increasing our property taxes on the forgotten part of Wacomico County. Thank you for your time and consideration on this request. The next public comment is from Riley Smith. Enough is enough. As a city resident, I am already at a disadvantage with double taxation, both city and county. Our mayor and council spend money like the Beverly Hills Housewives and a city and county that has San Francisco-sized homeless problems, trash bombs, $3 million bike paths, public funding of high-risk small businesses, bureaucratic staff, and salary increases a unfunded pension, out of control city water and sewer increases, and yes, providing rides to the homeless to Baltimore for appointments. Guess we don't need Peninsula Regional anymore. The mayor wants the city max tax rate and SC7-35 limiting spending eliminated. In other words, a tax increase in city rates, too, uncontrolled. Poverty, poverty rate in Salisbury is 25.1%. Poverty rate in Wacomico County is 14.9%. 36 million unemployed in the USA. USA on the verge of depression, if not already starting it. Many of the 36 million unemployed will not be rehired. Small business first and larger businesses bankruptcies. Even the California governor is considering a 10% reduction of state employees. I do not think we need to live in the union of Soviet Socialist Maryland cities and counties. Just a political nerve to consider increased spending of another person's money in general, then add a tax increase in the midst of a pandemic is rentless, self-serving, and disgrace disgraceful. Thank you, Riley Smith. Thank you, Ms. Harley. Are there any more public comments? All right, this will conclude the public hearing on the constant yield rate. Ms. Harley. Um, Next, we have a public hearing on resolution number 27-2020. This is to approve a relocation of a portion of a forest conservation easement containing 0.39 more or less acres located on 6405 Rockwell Walk and Road. Council previously held a work session on this request on April the 7th, 2020, and we do have Mr. Tyler Walston with the Wacomico County Department of Planning and Zoning and Community Development on Zoom if there are any questions. Do we have any questions? Do we have any public comments? Any public comments? Ms. Harley, do you have any? That I do sent? not. You do not. Okay, this will conclude the public hearing on resolution number 27-2020. Need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. We've got a motion by Mr. Hastings and a second by Mr. Holloway. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Chair votes aye. The motion passes unanimously. Ms. Hurley. 
And next on the agenda is a public hearing on resolution number 28-2020. This is to approve a relocation of a portion of a forest conservation easement containing 0.34 more or less acres located along Song Sparrow Circle. This is along lots 266-301. And council also had a work session on this request on April the 7th, 2020. Okay, are there any public comments? Are there any public comments on 28-2020? All right, Ms. Harley, do you have any written comments? I do not. No written comments. Okay, this will conclude the public hearing on resolution number 28-2020. Need a motion to approve resolution number 28-2020. So moved. Got a motion by Mr. McCain. Do I have a second? second? Mr. Davis. Do I have a second by Mr. Davis. Any discussion? No discussion. Um, all in favor of resolution number 28 2020, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Chair votes aye. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, Ms. Harley, again. Okay, so next for your consideration is resolution number 25-2020. This is to approve a temporary modification to the rental car concession agreement for use with Enterprise Leasing Company of Baltimore, the Hertz Corporation, and Avis Rent-A-Car System, Inc., and their successors and assigns and authorizing the county executive to execute such modification agreements. And we do have Mr. Tony Rudy here, who is the assistant airport manager, if there are any questions. Okay, have a, I need a motion to approve resolution number 25-2020. And a second. So moved. Got a motion by Mr. McCain. Do we have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. McCain. Any discuss, or uh, Mr. Davis, any discussion? Any discussion? Mr. Cannon? Uh, the only thing I would say is I still don't really feel too comfortable with it. I know we had a work session on this before. Yes, sir. I'm just uh, not so sure. And, and again, I don't want to compromise anything that has to do with the airport. And this. I asked that question at the last work session. Um, I'm, not, I'm not so sure this, um, you know, whether we pass this or not, is going to directly impact the airport. Uh, but again, I just have, um, I feel a little bit uneasy about just agreeing to modify this as I would the, uh, the parking concession agreement in the next resolution. It's just my personal feelings, unless I'm missing something here. Um, Any more discussion? Can we ask Tony to maybe address? Yeah, yes, sir, Tony, if you don't mind, I appreciate it. Come to the table. Well, I guess one thing I want to point out was- Can you bring the mic closer to you? In, in the um, concession agreement, presented it today so it's it's um it, it's nothing i guess over and above that we would expect under under the circumstances today um in addition to that um i think the airport's somewhat insulated with the uh cares act funding that uh that we've requested the grant for for operating expenses so it should not have any uh, uh direct impact on uh um uh on the general public or Uh, when you say it shouldn't have any direct impact, what, what do you mean as far as? I mean, as far as uh, as far as uh, the airport um, looking for further uh, assistance from the county financially, mm -hmm. we should we should be covered, as I said, for the next uh, at least the next four years. Okay. Thank so, you, Mr. Holloway. So, can you repeat what you just said about the airport looking for the county for assistance? No, I'm saying if if you're concerned about um, uh, taxpayer funding uh -huh. uh, to cover cover these losses in revenue, um, that's not the case. Being the fact that we're because we're, of the federal grant, the 18 million dollar federal grant. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. But Tony, you can use those funds. Can you use those funds to actually pay these rents? Uh, we're not asking for rent. Um, concession we're only asking for um the waiver of their minimum annual guarantee which is um uh, well i guess i guess that's what i'm meaning yeah you know, that that the, is basically those funds cover um uh operational <laughs> maintenance expenses where normally we would be getting the revenue from the rental car companies so that would make up the difference okay. any more discussion All 
All right. Uh, I need. Uh, we got the motion to approve. All in favor? You're missing it's, a. I'm oh, sorry. I don't know where Josh went. Yeah. We still got people. We still vote. Got a motion and a second. Do you want to wait for Josh to come back? I don't I know. He's so wait. golf. I think we can wait. Give him a couple minutes. I must have an emergency. All right. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to go ahead with the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. I'd oppose. I didn't hear you oppose. I have to oppose as well because uh, I, I have a problem giving up this revenue and then the taxpayers have to make up the difference. So that's one, two. Three to two. It's three to two. So. Where's Miss Ackley? Did you, did you? Miss Ackley, I didn't hear your vote. You can't hear. I have to unmute yourself, Miss Ackley. Can't read your lips. Can you try it again? <laughs> no. Don't know who that is. <laughs> Lynn, can you I unmute can her? her? There we go. Try that. Can you hear me? Here we yeah, go. Okay. We got you now. Miss Ackley, what is your vote? Opposed. You opposed. So right now it's three to three. Now we have uh, Josh. <laughs> Josh. I didn't do it. it what is your vote on this? Hey, yay. Yay. Is that what you said? Yeah. All right, so it's four to three. <laughs> so motion passes four to three. Thank All you. Right, next. Ms. Next, Hunt. you have resolution number 26 2020. This is to approve a temporary modification to the parking concession agreement with the Republic Parking System. LLC and authorizing the county executive to execute the agreement. Okay, I need a motion to approve resolution number 26 2020. So moved. Got a motion. We have a second. Second. Have a second. Um, any discussion? I would only repeat what I'd said previously. I think, you know, uh, I, I don't see where the taxpayers could do, should, should uh, support this or we should support it and the taxpayers should pay it. Uh, if there is funding coming from the federal level that, that could handle that, then I think that's better for it. Yeah, I, I agree. We are going to be very we are going to be very restricted and probably should be looking at cutting our own revenue five to ten percent this coming year, without a doubt, with the with the budget we're currently looking at right now. That's a good point. Any more discussion? All right, and, um, got a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. No. Uh, uh, chair votes nay. Miss Ackley, what was your vote? Keeps cutting herself off. Miss Ackley, for the record, what was your vote? You know, this is ridiculous. Yeah, it is. All right, I, I was I lost, lost connection and I missed what we were discussing. We are voting on resolution number twenty six dash twenty twenty. Aye. Aye. So it passes five to two. Okay, next on the agenda is resolution number 29 2020. This is extending the date for the adoption of the annual budget and appropriation bill from June 1st to you, June. June the 15th. Thank you. Thank you. Per Charter Section 705F, the annual budget and appropriation bill is to be adopted by June 1st unless the date is extended by resolution to a date no later than June the 15th. This resolution extends the date to June 15th to allow Council additional time to review the proposed fiscal year 21 budget. Okay, need a motion to approve resolution number 29-2020 and a second. So moved. Got a motion by Mr. McCain. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Um, <clears throat> Hastings. Any discussion? Any discussion? All, right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Resolution passes unanimously. 
Okay, next for your consideration is resolution number 30-2020. This is extending the date for the adoption of the fiscal year 20-21 through 2025 capital improvement program from June the 1st to June the 15th, 2020. Section 704G of the charter provides that the county council shall adopt a capital improvement program born before the third Tuesday in February or such date as may be set by resolution pursuant to section 707. The council adopted resolution number 04, 2020 on January 7th, extending the adoption date to June the 1st. This resolution further extends the adoption date to June the 15th. And this is to allow council additional time to review the proposed fiscal year 2021-2025 capital improvement program. Okay, need a motion to approve resolution number 30-2020 and a second. So moved. Got a motion by Mr. McCain. Do we have a second? I have a second by Mr. Hastings. Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor of resolution number 30-2020, say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. To your votes, aye. Ms. Ackley, for the record, what is your vote? Aye. Aye, Ms. Ackley votes aye. Passed unanimously. Ms. Harley. Okay, the next item for consideration is resolution number 31-2020. This is to authorize the county to acquire easement on 217.49 acres, more or less, within the Quantico Creek Royal Legacy area from Michael B. Phillips, trustee. The property is located on the southerly side of Nanticoke's Neck Road and is designated on tax map 35 as parcel 33. And I believe we have Mr. Frank McKenzie here with the Department of Planning, Zoning, and Community Development on Zoom. Okay, I need a motion to approve resolution number 31-2020 and a second. So moved. Got a motion by Mr. McCain. Do we have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Davis. Any discussion? Any discussion? Is Mr. Okay. McKenzie on the line? I'm sorry. Is Mr. McKenzie on the line? Mr. McKenzie, are you on the Zoom meeting with us today? Yes, I am at the meeting. There he is. Thank you for joining us. Does anybody have any <laughs> questions for Mr. McKenzie? All right. No questions. All in favor of resolution number 31-2020, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed aye. say nay. Chair votes aye. Ms. Ackley, do you have a vote? Aye. Ms. Ackley votes aye. Mr. Okay. President, I'm going to abstain. I'm sorry? I'm going to abstain from voting. Okay. Mr. A uh, Mr. Hastings abstains, so we have it. six ayes and one abstention. Okay. All right. The next item for business is resolution number 32-2020. This is to approve Lindsay Rader Esquire and Funk and Bolton PA as special legal counsel on uh, matters relating to the preparation and issuance of bonds by Wacomico County. And we have Mr. Wayne Strasburg in the audience, um, Director of Administration here, if there are any questions. Okay, need a motion to approve resolution number 32-2020. So moved. Got a motion by Mr. McCain. Do we have a second? Second. Got a uh, second by Mr. Hastings. Any discussion? Any discussion? All right, all in favor of resolution number 32-2020, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposition say nay. Aye. I hear Ms. Ackley says aye. Um, aye. Vote is unanimous. <clears throat> all right. Ms. Harley? Anything else? That is all I have for right now. Okay. Moving on to public comments. If there are any public comments, um, limit them to three minutes or less. Any presented material may be submitted to the council members. Um, Ms. Harley, do you have any written comments? We have several public comments that came in by email. Um, so Lynn, Sandy, and I are going to be alternating and reading them again today. Okay. Um, to start, um, several people sent the same comments. I'm going to read the public comment and then state the names of the individuals that sent the same public comment. In other words, you're not going to duplicate the comments. That is correct. 
My name is Jimmy Reed. I am a resident of Wacomico County. I urge all the members of the County Council to support us Wacomico County residents by adopting a Second Amendment Sanctuary Resolution. This comment was also submitted by C. Paul Hooker, Haley Bennett, Norman Bennett, Edgar Fleming, Ron Dida, D. Shane McDade, Robert Thomas, Gregory H. Williams, Richard Hall, Jeffrey Holliday, Spencer Griffith, Virginia M. Crawford, Eggert Fleming, Martin Rogers, Lee Richardson, Susan Bowman, Ray Smith, Ernest Atkins, Martin Rogers, Deborah Book. Okay, um, next we have two comments that came in um, on the evening of the last meeting, which was May 5th, but it was too late to read them at that meeting, so I'll read them tonight or today. Um, first is from Jessica Peters. She says, good evening. I am requesting all council members please vote no on both resolu water resolutions and the pre-annexation agreement. Um, the next one was from Mike Conklin. He said, please vote no on the two resolutions for water and pre-annexation agreement. Okay, next we have... Um, Two comments from Brian Cook. They came in on different dates and they are slightly different, so I am gonna read both of them. Good evening, members of the council. Please support the resolution submitted by Sheriff Mike Lewis and support his passage declaring Wacomico County a Second Amendment sanctuary. Please join me and my fellow county citizens in supporting our rights and standing up for our freedoms. Protect us and our children's rights. Allow the citizens of Wacomico County and their children to continue their way of life while sending a clear message that we will stand up for our rights, protect our freedoms, and defend our passions. These are fundamental rights given to all citizens that are protected under the Bill of Rights. Council members, please join me in support of Sheriff Mike Lewis and his resolution request to become a Second Amendment sanctuary. It is the responsibility of every American to defend our rights as well as the duty of our elected officials to protect them. A resolution like this not only sends a message but will lay the building blocks for protecting our community as well as making sure our children's and their children's rights are defended. This sends a message that we shall not take any more infringement on our rights or our way of life being punished for the big three access the bay in the city of Baltimore. We are not them, we are Wacomico County. Thank you for your consideration. All right, next is from Lee Robertson. He says, my name is Lee Robertson. I am a full-time resident of Wacomico County. I am urging all the members of the County Council to back we the people of Wacomico County and our rights by adopting a Second Amendment sanctuary resolution. We the people have our backs against a wall when it comes to protecting our county from new laws passed by across the Bay majority legislators. These people know nothing about us here, but we get are voted, but we get outvoted most of the time as we are in the minority. This 2A sanctuary resolution is the only way we can have to protect our freedoms constantly taken away by laws passed that are only for us and not the criminal. Um, next is, my name is Norman Bennett. I'm a resident of Mordella Springs, Wacomico County, Maryland. I am writing you today with great concern. This great concern is not only with the current pandemic, but with a continued attack against our civil rights. Since 2013, there has been a threat against our civil rights, mainly our right to bear and keep arms. The threat has been per per perpetuated by extremists and our state and federal legislators, whom are backed by extremist organizations that push for extreme gun control under the guise of common sense gun safety legislation. There is no common sense in the reasoning or in their version of gun safety. They target law-abiding citizens by relaxing penalties against criminals. Now they have even called for the release of criminals prematurely because of this pandemic. As a veteran, I fought for our rights as well as others abroad. I took an oath to uphold the Constitution. I continue to uphold that oath by writing you today. With this current pandemic, we have seen new gun owners at a rate never seen before. Firearm dealers and firearm <coughs> educators are busier than ever before. Our citizens are facing great concerns, which are a pandemic. 
convicts being released and immediately reoffending, a crippled economy, and people stuck at home more than ever before with the fear of a home invasion. The extremist solution is to shut down gun shops so that law-abiding citizens cannot defend themselves. Thankfully, our governor ignored them for now. These same extremists have vowed to make legislative session even more vital towards our rights. I am urging you to pass a Second Amendment resolution to show Annapolis and D.C. that Wacomico County backs their citizens' rights and backs our share in the local law enforcement upholding the Constitution. Thank you for your time in here and my concerns. Okay, next is Randy Morris. My name is Randy Morris. I am a resident of Wacomico County. Over the course of the last few months, I have spoken with many people and as you know, also started a Facebook group promoting a Second Amendment sanctuary resolution in Wicomico County. As this group grew, I found that the members, just as the residents of Wicomico County, come from all walks of life, from all races, from all persuasions, and from varying religious faiths. We have conservative and liberals in agreement that our constitution, constitutional guaranteed rights, including our right to bear arms, should not be infringed anymore. The 1968 Gun Control Act was touted to be the end all to gun crime. Since then, thousands of gun laws have been passed only to restrict the law-abiding citizens from defending themselves from a criminal. Chicago and Baltimore are evidence that stringent gun control laws only empower the criminal and restrict law-abiding citizens from defending themselves in their homes. I surely hope no member of this council wants Wicomico to be like Chicago or Baltimore or Baltimore. The Second Amendment is an essential right to the people as identified by the Constitution and upheld by many U.S. Supreme Court cases such as the Miller case, the McDonald case, and the Heller case, to name a few. In talking to many firearm dealers and firearm trainers over the last month, not only has there been a surge of new firearm owners, many of these new firearm owners are Democrats who have become disappointed by the lies they have been told by their state legislators in the media about the ease of purchase of firearms. They found out for themselves that this is not the case. The ability to acquire arms for self-defense and the common defense is heavily regulated. One can even look at Prince William County, Virginia, which even under Democrat control upheld the constitution by sustaining a constitutional sanctuary. This is no partisan issue those that stand against recognizing the Constitution are no friend of it. I am urging the council members to support our rights and our sheriff. I plead with you to stand with our sheriff in support of our U.S. Constitution, most notably Article 6, Bill of Rights Amendment 2, the Bill of Rights Amendment 9, and Maryland Constitution, notably Article 2, which some in our state legislator have and will continue to attempt to subvert. Again, I urge you to support our Constitution, our law-abiding citizens, and our law enforcement by supporting a Second Amendment sanctuary resolution. Thank you for your time. Next is from Edward Torbert. I'm writing you to encourage the Wacomico County Council to consider adding Wacomico County to the list of counties that have chosen to be identified as Second Amendment sanctuary counties. Our lifestyle in the rural parts of the state of Maryland, such as the Eastern Shore, Western Maryland and Southern Maryland, which constitutes the majority of the area of the state, is very different from the metro area, which constitutes the majority of the population. We do not have the same crime experiences and tight living density as the metro area has, and we live in the outdoors much more than they. We enjoy our hunting and shooting sports. We also live in areas that are not always in close proximity to others, and our homes are, all, are not all in dense neighborhoods. We cherish and need our ability to be able to defend the lives and health of our families. Even though we have excellent police protection from our county sheriff and the Maryland State Police in our rural areas, they do not have the ability to respond instantaneously to a threat to our families. It is the responsibility of each homeowner to, make, to take measures to protect his family from those who would cause harm to them by whatever legal means they may choose. Our ability to do that is under threat every year at the state legislature by farther restrictions to what is legal in our state. I would appreciate the Wacomico County Council taking the stand for the people of our area and designate our county as a Second Amendment sanctuary county. Thank you for your attention to this message 
If you or the members of the council would like to ask any questions of me, I am ready to take their questions. Ms. Hurley or, um, or Ms. Sandy, the, uh, Nicole, uh, Councilwoman Ackley is locked out of the meeting apparently. So I could let her back in. Uh, um, Lynn, can you let Nicole back in? Thank you, Mr. Hastings. Sorry, I didn't see that Thank as you, I was reading these comments. Okay, so next we have William Turry. He says, I email you in response to a resolution to make Wicomico County a 2A sanctuary county. As you know, many counties and cities have already done so in Virginia, and we should follow suit. Universal background checks, assault weapon bans, and one handgun per 30-day period and high capacity magazine bans are some of the many reasons why many counties and cities decided to declare themselves not willing to infringe on the right of the people to keep and bear arms. All of the mentioned gun control measures will not stop crime significantly, if at all. And they only force the law abiding citizens to give up more of their second amendment rights. The militia in a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state does not reference the citizens who keep in their arms, which does not mean that citizens should be regulated. The militia of the individual states, National Guard, and state defense forces in the United States, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, Air Force, and Space Force should be and are regulated. The Second Amendment right, according to D.C. versus Heller, is the right of individuals to keep and bear arms, not the right of the militia to keep and bear arms. In conclusion, I urge you to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States and support the resolution. Okay, next is from Linda Luckman of Del Mar, Maryland. I am a resident of Wacomico County. I am urging all the members of the County Council to support the people of Wacomico County in protecting our rights by adopting a Second Amendment sanctuary resolution. The right to bear arms shall not be infringed. We must not tread on constitutional rights. Rights were endowed to us by our Creator and our founding fathers wanted to ensure us of those rights through adopting the Bill of Rights in the Constitution. They fought to keep this country a free nation. Without rights, we will not live as free people. They also warned and wrote about tyranny and corruption of government. Constitutional rights must be preserved and protected. We must keep this a free nation for future generations to come. Thank you for your time. All right, next is from Vincent Chapinus. He says, I am writing out of concern regarding the Wicomico County Board of Education's one-time funding request for computer carts and other items. There is no line item specification for what will be obtained at a specific cost per item, nor how the bids were submitted and who the contract is to be awarded to. If school is continued online, then these items may not be necessary or relevant. Other items may be needed for students to learn at home. If you are going to proceed with county business, especially Board of Education funding, all information requests should be addressed as they are submitted. In addition, an appendix should be included in the budget to show the details to what I have referenced above. I am concerned that any conflict of interest or negligence may create a future liability for the county. No decision has been made by our president of the United States for our governor as to if or when the next school year will begin. Therefore, all decisions should be put on hold. You represent the people of this county. Please take your responsibilities seriously. My think tank looks at all issues relevant to society and its interests. I am and our think tank is at your service to consult and advise pro bono as I am a resident of the county. Thank you for your consideration in this regard. Next is from Kurt Cantwell. I am a resident of Wacomico County. I am urging all the members of the County Council to back we, the Wacomico County residents, by adopting a Second Amendment sanctuary resolution. The County Council must value our liberty, freedom, and right to bear, to keep and bear arms. I am an avid hunter and sportsman and provide food for my family by practicing the use of my Second Amendment rights and really need to keep them to provide for my family. Next is Matthias Bowser. Um, 
I am a resident of Wicomico County. I am urging all the members of the County Council to back We the People of Wicomico County and our rights by adopting a Second Amendment sanctuary resolution. This resolution is vital to protecting our Second Amendment rights for not only us, but our future generations. Thank you for your consideration involving this matter. Next is from William Lewis. My name is William Lewis. I'm a resident of Wacomico County. I am urging all the members of the County Council to back we, the people of Wacomico County, in our rights by adopting a Second Amendment sanctuary resolution. This resolution is vital to protecting our Second Amendment rights, not only for us, but our future generations. Thank you for your consideration involving this matter. Okay, next is from William Lewis. I am a resident of Wicomico County. I am urging all the members of the County Council to back We the People of Wicomico County and our rights by adopting a Second Amendment sanctuary resolution. This resolution is vital to protecting our Second Amendment rights, but not only us, but our future generations. Thank you for your consideration involving this matter. Sincerely, William Lewis. Next is from Ricky Morris. I live at 5933 Tappan Lane, Salisbury, Maryland. My phone number is 443-614-6553. I am contacting you regarding the proposal to make Wacomico a sanctuary for our Second Amendment rights. Our leadership in Annapolis often do not share the same opinions and passion as, as do I. I feel it is important that we take control of our future and our destiny regarding these Constitution guaranteed rights. I am requesting and encouraging you to support the efforts to make Wacomico County a second or 2A sanctuary county. Thank you for your assistance in this very important matter. All right, next is Dave Cooper. To whom it may concern, my name is David Cooper. I am a current and lifelong resident of Wicomico County, Maryland, as well as an active voter. I am emailing to request that the Wicomico County Council formally adopt legislation to designate Wicomico County as a Second Amendment sanctuary. This legislation is supported by our own Sheriff, Mike Lewis. Most of you in some way, shape, or form turn to him with questions, so why wouldn't you back him and your cons constituents on this matter? Thank you for your attention in this matter. Next from Crystal Cooper. My name is Crystal Cooper. I am a 20-year resident of Wacomico County, Maryland, as well as an active voter. I am emailing to request that the Wacomico County Council formally adopt legislation to designate Wacomico County as a Second Amendment sanctuary. This legislation is supported by our own Sheriff Mike Lewis. You should back your sheriff, and more importantly, you should back your voters. Thank you for your attention in this matter. All right, next, my name is Dawn Robertson, and I am a lifetime resident of Wicomico County. I am a registered voter and vote in every election. I am extremely concerned with some of the council members' stance on our Second Amendment rights and our Constitution. I am, impl I am imploring you, the Council of Wicomico County, to back Sheriff Mike Lewis and the citizens of Wicomico County to make our county a Second Amendment sanctuary county. I take the Constitution and our God-given rights therein extremely serious. I am a law-abiding citizen, and I am, at this point, dismayed with the lack of importance that some council members are placing on this very important issue. Once again, I implore you to vote yes to making Wicomico County, our county, a Second Amendment sanctuary county. Next is from Lawrence Kent. I'm writing to you again to once more consider the proposition that will be coming before you soon on the request for the council to pass a resolution to make Wacomico County a Second Amendment sanctuary. I'm also adding a link to this that is to a book at Barnes & Noble. The site will allow you to read the forward of the book title, This Right Most Valued by Free Men, written by Oren G. Hatch. The book is called The Second Amendment Premier, a Citizen's Guidebook to the History, Sources, and Authorities for the Constitutional Guarantee of the Right to Keep and Bear Arms. All right, next is Tom Crawford. I am a resident of Wicomico County. I am urging all the members of the County Council to back We the People of Wicomico County and our rights by adopting a Second Amendment sanctuary resolution. 
Often our residents are subjected to laws and policies that are narrowly focused and ill thought out. In this case, there seems to be more emphasis on protecting the rights of the criminal than there is on those of the ordinary, hardworking, law-abiding citizens. As a registered gun owner who follows all the rules and regulations to keep my family and my fellow citizens safe, I resent being told my Second Amendment rights are of lesser value than those of criminals. Wicomico County is much different than a metropolitan area like Baltimore. As a rural community, our county council is more attuned to the realities of an area where if someone dials 911, it may take up to 10 minutes or longer for law enforcement to arrive. In a critical situation where life and death is a reality, legal gun owners should have the right to defend themselves without a bureaucrat from a large urban area dictating how I can protect myself and my family. I am seriously urging you to vote in favor of the Second Amendment Sanctuary Resolution. Next, best wishes to the council members. My name is Dan Niblett. I am a resident of Wacomico County and I vote in every election. I am urging all members of the county council to back the Wacomico County residents by adopting a Second Amendment Sanctuary Resolution. The Second Amendment is critical to our freedom and the state of Maryland has done nothing but make it more and more difficult for citizens to exercise this important right. Thank you for your consideration. Okay, next is Matthew Crockett. He says, I am writing to you as a concerned citizen. Our constitutional rights, especially our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms is in jeopardy. With every tragic event, violent crime, an element of society renews their demands for Congress and state legislators to enact common sense gun control. This is a pathos appeal. It is used to disarm you from their intent of gun control because it is common sense that life is the central ethos appeal. Words are being weaponized to manipulate a person into cooperating or giving something up. They might have otherwise not. People by nature want to be agreeable and reduce conflict. Many will use statistical data to show how many crimes or suicides have been committed with the use of firearm to justify depriving another person on their rights. Pathos appeal, we all want to save lives. What, what they do not use to justify gun control legislation are peer-reviewed empirical studies that show two things concerning gun control. First, gun control and violence are positively correlated in social sciences, this means that, our, that as most restrictive gun laws and regulations are passed, crime also increases. This is a positively correlated relationship. Secondly, legislation that is introduced relies solely on statistical data and not on evidence-based methods to reduce violence and suicide by firearm. Empirical studies have revealed that gun control does not stop mass shootings. There is no relationship between a reduction of mass shootings and gun control laws. Some things can be done to reduce violence and suicide by firearm, but this requires real work and effort, and it does not involve gun control. What you can do today is help protect the citizenry and our right to defend ourselves from those who would, would do us harm. Operant conditioning is a valuable tool. We learn it as kids. I will not harm you because I do not want you to harm me. A small element in society that, by their nature, does not harm others because for fear of punishment, reward versus risk, such as arrest, imprisonment, or someone having the ability to adequately defend themselves. When you disarm the citizen, you remove one of those protective layers. You have reduced the risk to the criminal and thus increased the reward. Please support measures and legislative actions that will protect my rights and the rights of others to defend themselves how we see fit. Someone needs to take a stand in the state of Maryland. If you have the courage to do so, please do. We will support you and others of governing bodies will follow, but someone has to be first. Okay, next is from Linda Luffman. She says, good morning to all the Wacomico County Council. Due to work and deadlines, I could not attend this meeting today. However, please include my email as my comment before the council. 
I am writing this email in hopes that all of you will support our constitutional rights and voting yay will make Wacomico County a Second Amendment sanctuary. My grandparents immigrated to this great nation looking and seeking a better way of life for them and their children, my mother being one of those children. They left their home country and were willing to take risks to get here. Why? They were seeking a better life, not only for themselves, but for their children and us, me, their grandchildren. A life away from tyranny and oppression and freedom that they were not granted by their homeland. I'm urging you to do today to preserve those freedoms and rights afforded and granted to us by our creator and as stated in the highest law of the land, the Constitution. Within the Constitution resides the Bill of Rights and that to guarantee us the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and the right to bear arms, among, among other things. Those rights must not now or ever be trampled or infringed on. These rights must be preserved for all, every living U.S. citizen that yearns to breathe free for now and forever. Let freedom ring now and forever. Please vote yay. Thank you for your time and consideration. All right, next is John Palmer. As a strong supporter of our Second Amendment rights, I fully support acknowledging Wicomico County as the Second Amendment sanctuary. I would like to see specifically stated that the procurement of ammunition not be impeded by useless regulations, such as background checks for purchasing ammunition and limits on the amount of rounds you desire to purchase. I would also like to see statements about being able to purchase ammunition online. I would like to see the council move forward on this issue prior to the 2020 election with a roll call vote. Thank you. Next is from Mary Ashante, president of the Wacomico County NAACP. Greetings. We are concerned about the Second Amendment sanctuary resolution proposed by Sheriff Lewis. Please don't pass anything that is against what we pass in the General Assembly without thoroughly giving citizens the same opportunity that we have at the General Assembly. In this situation with Sheriff Lewis, is this one of those cases where if he and his followers lose in Annapolis, they will push to have the county to give them what they want? Would, we would like for each of you to reply to this email. What part of the Second Amendment is being denied to the people of Wacomico County? Should people have a right to openly carry assault rifles and the kind of weapons that terrorists carry? Please do not agree to that nonsense. This is not about hunting rights, target shooting, etc. This movement is about power and influence. Next, the general public does not know what laws that this group is complaining about. Please keep us informed. Lastly, with all the more serious legislative problems that the county government has, Shouldn't this issue be addressed when we can have public meetings? Um, next is from Donnie Waters. Dear Wicomico County Council members, the recent murder of Ahmad Arbery, 25, a black youth jogging in a Brunswick neighborhood on February 23rd, when a white man and his son chased him down, telling police later that they thought he looked like the suspect in a series of recent break-ins in this area gives me concern and pause. Privileged individuals in America continue to exert illegal, racist, and deadly terrorism on minorities, and especially African Americans with no regard. The COVID-19 pandemic impact in cities, counties, and states that are reporting racial data reveal that the coronavirus has devastated the black community with extraordinary and disproportionate results. Almost one third of infections nationwide have affected black Americans, according to data from the Centers for Disease Control, though blacks represent only 13% of the US population. Additionally, the pattern of victim blaming arises anytime inequities in the health and wealth of communities of color are laid bare. Instead of addressing how decades of structural racism, political exploitation, and economic exclusion have compounded health and wealth disparities in black communities, the American habit has been to trivialize, trivialize those inequities <coughs> as the result of individuals' behavior. Recognizing experience of racism are real and not me being oversensitive. 
Racism is a persistent social problem, and if you feel you have been targeted by prejudice and discrimination, it is important to recognize that these are real issues that take a toll on my community's physical and mental well-being. The above-mentioned incidents are constant reminders for me of the many issues that a black resident of Wicomico County give me pause. I question the legality of the Second Amendment Sanctuary Resolution proposed by Sheriff Lewis and his supporters. The following rationale is worth the Wicomico County Council considering, and I urge you to vote no in adopting this nonsense. At some point in the day, decency and common sense must weigh in on decisions. I am confident if a crowd of any portions of the citizenry not from the privileged caste showed up and pleaded for your support, you would quickly ignore their pleas. I am writing in support of Ms. Mary Ashante, president of Wicomico County and AACP position with regard to this matter. It is dangerous because it represents a further fraying of the national fabric. Democracy works only as far as people have faith in it. If local jurisdictions dislike state laws, there are democratic mechanisms for changing them. Number two, Second Amendment type of sanctuary refers to a city, town, or county that has adopted a resolution rejecting the enforcement of state or federal gun laws perceived to violate the Second Amendment. Number three, Sheriff Mike Lewis, who is a publicly elected official, is aligning himself with the movement of constitutional sheriffs who believe their position should grant them the authority to determine the constitutionality of state and local laws, even if that means defying the federal government. Number four, Mary B. McCord, a former acting assistant attorney general for national security, argued in the Washington, Washington Post that Second Amendment sanctuary resolutions have no legal basis and that only a court can overturn a state or federal law. State constitution constitutions, statutes, and common law generally affirm the supremacy of federal and state law, meaning that local jurisdictions are preempted from enacting conflicting ordinances and resolutions, she wrote. Number five, preamble of the Wicomico County Charter. We the people of Wicomico County in the state of Maryland, in accordance with the provisions of Article 6A of the Constitution of Maryland, and the general laws of Maryland do adopt and establish as our charter and form of government this charter of Wicomico County, Maryland. Number six, section 101, body, corporate, and politic, Wicomico County Charter. Number seven, Wicomico County as it now exists cons constitutes a body, corporate, and politic. Under this charter, it shall have all rights and powers of local self-government and home rules as are now or many hereafter be provided or necessarily implied by this charter and by the constitution and laws of the state of Maryland. The constitution and laws of the state of Maryland grant Wicomico County its charter and power. So Wicomico County cannot supersede the state of Maryland. Number nine, annually over 114,000 individuals are victims of gun violence. 313 people a day shot with over 37,000 resulting in death. Number 10, I invoke the higher aspirations espoused regularly as you recite the Pledge of Allegiance, under God, with liberty and justice for all, and the Constitution of the US, of the US we the people. It means more than just the well-connected, privileged, and wealthy. Governor Mario Cuomo once stated, America was born in outrageous ambitions, so bold as to be improbable. The deprived, the oppressed, the powerless from all over the globe come here with little more than the desire to realize themselves. Number 11, it may be time for a more thorough and impartial investigation by the ACLU, Attorney General, and higher governmental officials that are not bent to local proclivities to be conducted on how things are done in Wicomico County government concerned citizen Donnie Waters. Okay, next we have um, from Bishop Leon J. Wilson. 
and he says, I totally agree we shouldn't have open carry of assault weapons of any kind. I've seen the damage they can do. Target shooting or sports events, not for defense of a home or carried on the street. Okay. Next is Glendola Stevens. She says, I am in agreement with President Ashanti in reference to asking the County Council to vote down the Second Amendment Sanctuary Council resolution. So many of our young people are being murdered and lives have been destroyed. These individuals may have become future leaders, productive members of society, even role models to others. I, our society needs to be pushing more for education and positive self-esteem. Next is from Eileen Johnson. Good evening, council members. I come to you as a parent with two children or two young children and as part of a group, Wakamako Push for Education that advocates for all of our public school children. Before taking time to be home with my children, I worked as an educator. I know the importance of using reason, facts, and logic when debating issues that matter to us. I also know how vitally important it is that we seek out reliable, fact-based sources in order to know what is best for us. In the matter of making our county a Second Amendment sanctuary, the question is, what will best protect us? What role does government have in protecting its citizens? I believe that government can put in place common sense regulations that will protect our citizens from gun violence. I welcome these laws that will allow us to make small changes to the gun buying process in any attempt to help us curtail the epidemic of gun violence in our country and to avoid avoidable death in our community. Responsible gun owners have nothing to fear I know that if we were to have a gun in my home, my children, my partner, or I would be more likely to die from that gun than any intruder. Accidental deaths and suicides are far more likely outcomes than family protection. It is for this reason that my family does not own a gun. However, if my neighbor chooses to own a gun, I believe he should do so responsibly. With our freedoms come responsibility. We ought to fight as hard for those responsibilities as we do for those freedoms. Common sense laws like universal background checks help close gun show and online selling loopholes that allow anyone, regardless of their history, with domestic violence or criminal background to easily get a gun. Red flag laws help us to avoid scenarios in which a autistic teenager shoots up 26 first graders and educators by simply making sure that homicidal or suicidal people have less chance of assessing a gun. Every year, 114,328 Americans are shot. Every year, 37,603 Americans die from gun violence, with many women, women being targets of intimate partners. Every year, 22,926 people die from gun suicide. Suicide survivors who recount their ordeals often speak of the moment before intimate death when they had second thoughts. Those who die from gunshot wounds are usually successful and do not get that second chance. Why is the U.S. suicide rate three times higher than other high-income countries? What is it that makes our country different? It's not the video games or toxic masculinity. It's the easy access to guns. Farm, firearms are the leading cause of death among American children, recently surpassing motor vehicle <clears throat> crashes. This is a public health issue. This is not the time to implement laws that make it clear or make it easier to gain access to a gun, no matter one's history with domestic violence, restraining orders, homicidal or suicidal threats. I speak for many Wacomico County moms when I say we will do whatever we need to do to protect our children, families, and community. I ask that the council delay any vote on this serious matter until we have adequate community input. Next is Susan Calhoun. She says, I wish my statement to be held as public comment at the next county council meeting. My name is Susan Calhoun. Um, it's in reference to Constitution of the United States of America, Bill of Rights, Amendment 2, which states, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. 
and then she says, removing our right to self-defense is un unconstitutional and would not pertain to everyone equally. Some people would still bear arms. Criminals could still have guns because they don't abide by the law. The wealthy, including our con congressmen, would still have armed bodyguards to defend their com compounds. The only ones affected would be the common law abiding citizen. I am urging the county council to adopt a second amendment sanctuary resolution securing our right to keep and bear arms. Next is from Jesse Ferguson. I hope this email finds you well. I'm writing this afternoon to continue urging the members of the Wacomico County Council to support Sheriff Mike Lewis and the residents of the county. Please support the proposed resolution to declare Wacomico County a Second Amendment sanctuary. Every year, the lawmakers in Annapolis propose new and onerous restrictions on our natural rights. Every year, our voices are ignored. Our Second Amendment rights matter. Please stand with us. All right, next is from Kevin English. I am writing today in support of making Wicomico County a Second Amendment sanctuary. I am proud to stand with Sheriff Lewis and my fellow residents to protect our most essential liberty. If this liberty is allowed to fall to the wayside, then all of our other freedoms will surely fall. It is my hope that our council members will join us in this endeavor to secure this freedom for future generations. And then he quoted Samuel Adams, if ye love wealth better than liberty, the tranquility of servitude better than the an animating contest of freedom, go home from us in peace. We ask not your counsels or arms, crouch down and lick the hands which feed you. May your chains set lightly upon you and may posterity forget that ye were our countrymen. Okay, the um, next letter is from several, several individuals. Um, it's from Jared Shablin, Chair of the Lower Shore Progressive Caucus, Amber Green, Co-Chair, City of Salisbury, Lynching Memorial Task Force, Wacomico County, NAACP, Branch 7028B, Mary Ashante, President, James Wakamaka, Wacomico Truth and Reconciliation Initiative, Nicole Antoinette Hollywood, local professor and volunteer with MDA. Deshawn Dowdy, President, Salisbury Junior Chamber of Commerce. Eileen Johnson, President, Wacomico Push for Education. Katie Everson, organizer, Moms Demands Action. And the letter states, Wacomico County, May 19, 2020. Several local organizations and community groups are coming back together to ask that the Wacomico County Council delay voting on a resolution declaring Wacomico County, Maryland a Second Amendment sanctuary. Our coalition's belief is the current efforts fail to address three key issues. The first of these issues is the failure to take into account the racial disparities and unfairness in the treatment of minority gun owners. On February the 23rd of this year, Gregory McMichael, a retired DA investigator, an authorized gun owner shot and killed 25-year-old Ahmed Aubrey in Brunswick, Georgia, after pursuing him as a suspected criminal. McMichael was not questioned by police nor arrested until recently this month due to public outcry. On July 6, 2016, just days after our country celebrated our constitutional rights, Philando Castle was shot and killed by police officer Geronimo Yanez when he reached for his wallet at the instruction of the officer after informing the officer that he had a registered weapon in the vehicle. On August the 5th, 2014, John Crawford III was shot by police Officer Sean Williams in a Beaver Creek, Ohio, Walmart, while carrying an unpacked BB gun, which he had found on a shelf. Ohio is an open carry state. All three men were victims of the unfairness of gun laws in their prospective areas, as well as the continuing effects of white su supremacy in America. As Huey P. P. Newton, co-founder of the original Black Panther Party, put it, quote, Sometimes, if you want to get rid of the gun, you have to pick up, you have to pick the gun up, end quote. There is no outcry to make people's guns. However, the current state of our society demands a place for everyone at the table to discuss matters of life and death. 
The second of these issues is the resolution's language that is currently in anti-democracy and contrary to rule of law. In the United States, if a law is suspected to be unconstitutional, it is challenged in court, not disobeyed and ignored by citizens or politicians according to what they feel is right at the moment. The third issue is to ensure gun owners from all backgrounds across Wacomico County are able to have a voice in this conversation. The current effort was done in a closed door Zoom meeting and a Facebook group that many gun owners here in Wacomico were not welcome or allowed in. Any legislation moving forward on this issue should be an inclusive conversation to ensure that everyone can safely purchase, own, and learn how to use firearms. On May the 6th, the Wacomico Republic Central Committee hosted a panel, panel on the Second Amendment with Wacomico Sheriff Mike Lewis and Council Members Nicole Ackley, Joe Holloway, and John Cannon. Our coalition agrees that the Second Amendment and gun ownership are important to our region's culture and the insurance of our freedom and safety in our society. That being said, the Wacomico GOP has attempted to block several voices in our community from having their voices heard by attempting to falsely make this a partisan issue. The reason this coalition supports a delay in the passing of this legislation is based on three key points. The resolution. Bullet point one, fails to take into consideration account racial disparities and how minorities are treated in gun ownership. Bullet point two, uses language that calls for the undermining of democratic principles and the rule of law. Bullet point three, ensures gun owners from all backgrounds across Wacomico County are able to have a voice in this conversation. Okay, next is Eddie Boyd. Good morning, President Dodd and members of the Wacomico County Council. I'm looking to express my opposition to the draft resolution declaring Wacomico County, Maryland, a Second Amendment sanctuary. The U.S. judicial system provides the appropriate process for determining whether laws passed by the Maryland General Assembly are constitutional or not. Making such a determination is well outside the, of the scope of the authority of the Wacomico County Council. Making premature decisions, especially when there is no urgent need, is not good governance. It is certainly unwise for the county to limit itself by resolving not to ever take actions when such actions could be very likely be the right remedy for some future issue. Furthermore, the Wicomico County government should not take on the responsibility of becoming the lawyer nor providing the legal means for an individual or a group of individuals who feels a certain law passed by the Maryland General Assembly is unconstitutional. Individuals and groups already have access to the U.S. judicial system, including the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Frankly, I don't understand the purpose of this resolution, nor what problem you believe it will solve. It will create far more problems than it will solve, including creating further division among us. And that's, that's it. Okay, next we have, um, this is our last public comment and is from Keith Henry. It is important that I take this opportunity to address the gun sanctuary resolution. I'm opposed to any expansion of gun owner rights in our county that might run counter to the intent of enacted law by the Maryland legislator. Maryland law holds legal jurisdiction for our gun laws. Any resolution to the contrary by the county council would be a direct challenge to Maryland state law. Is the county prepared for an inevitable legal challenge? Our sheriff is actually asking you to pass a law that would be illegal under Maryland law. Again, the sheriff is coming before this body with a proposal to circumvent duly enacted laws. Should our sheriff be engaged in lawmaking, the sheriff should be engaged in upholding and enforcing the law, not making it. Perhaps his interest would be better served as a state legislator. It's not clear to me what the expan expansion of rights would provide in the resolution or why they may even be warranted. If the resolution endorses semi-automatic and military-style assault weapons to be carried in public spaces, I am opposed. If council would enact such legislation, council would subject themselves and all citizens to the fear and threat of violence. At the very core of this resolution 
is fear and threats of violence by armed protesters to overturn duly enacted laws. Please do not endorse the types of behavior recently displayed at the Michigan Capitol building by proponents of the same movement. Wacomico County citizens do not want a rogue, rogue militia group and you have the responsibility to quell this powder keg. I am a gun owner and a hunter, but a further expansion of gun rights is unwarranted. Maryland laws were enacted to save lives. I could see the sheriff concern himself with the safety of citizens, all of our citizens. That is why we pay him to do so. Thank you for your consideration in this critical matter. And that Thank concludes you, public comments. Thank you, Ms. Hurley. Um, or, this uh, excuse me. One person on the Zoom call wants to know if they can make a comment. I wasn't sure what the answer that to that was. Sure, go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, I believe it was Dave Cooper who said he wanted to speak. So you can unmute yourself. Hi, Council. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, I just want to just bring one fact to light with speaking. I'm, I'm hearing the people say that they are, you know, representing you know, maybe poverty stricken or people that are, are, are not well endowed with money or that the second amendment right is only for the rich or the, um, I forget the exact wording they were using, but what a lot of these people aren't actually thinking about is in the event that we make laws more strict, more background checks, more things to actually obtain a gun, there are more people involved in that entire process. By doing so, there would be more fees, which would then make it even more expensive and ergo make it even harder for those who want to just go out and buy that hunting rifle or that set firearm to protect their home or their livelihood. So by increasing you know, all those, you're, you're not they're not really seeing the true concept of what we're trying to about to everybody we want to try to make it a more affordable process and a more simpler process so that everybody does have a right to keep and bear their own arms thank you david